Howdy Wastelanders, it's McFly and I'm back again with another Fallout 76 video. This one's going to be a little bit different. In this video I'm going to be grinding out some of the Atom challenges. A lot of the lifetime ones I haven't completed yet and the point of the video is to figure out what I can do to complete them as fast as possible and reap the benefits. Maybe you might have already done these before or maybe you haven't. Maybe I'll show you some tips on how you can just load up the game and just earn some free items for yourself. I am about to blabber on about a few things, Fallout related, but if you're just here for the tips and tricks, then you can skip to this time code. I do want to take a side note just to mention that the inspiration of this video was actually inspired by Fallout first. There's not much content that's been added to the game recently, and for me, I try to come up with my own ways to challenge myself in the game and breathe new life into it in different ways, whether it's I put my own self goal on something, like recently it was hitting level 200 by November, I hit that goal, that has been my drive for the past like 3 months I'd say, just cause I anticipated Wastelanders coming along, which in my opinion is totally awesome that it's on hold, that's cool, can't say I fully agree with Fallout first, but I agree with aspects and disagree with others, but that's also for another time. But like I said, inspiration of this video was fall at first and have they throw those atoms at you and I kind of want to work for it. I want that to be my challenge. So I finally dove back into the challenge list for the game and there's a bunch of grindy ones that I just haven't done yet or even just organically done, have completed, whatever. So I went back into it and I said I'm going to grind these out. I'm going to deliberately do whatever I can the fastest way to try and get as many of these atoms as I can because realistically the Halloween camp bundle I love 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 festive items in video games they are my bread and butter they are what I wait for. like whenever I'm playing an awesome new game or especially if it's online the first thing I think about playing is I can't wait for the next holiday specifically Halloween and Christmas Easter too that's kind of like some games ignore that one I can understand Fallout doesn't I do want to admit, Fallout does not. It knows Easter, it did it very well this week, and I wish it, they would implement other things like the way they implemented the Easter event. But like I was saying, this Halloween bundle, I don't care for all of it. I don't care for the vending, I don't care for the, the, the haystacks, and I really don't care for the smoke machine. It's just a reskin of the Mothman bundle, which I had bought because I wanted the smoke machine. And in my opinion, black smoke is gonna be more, I guess, versatile when it comes to building a camp than orange, bright orange smoke. That's like a one time of the year kind of thing for me, so I'm not going to buy this bundle. That's not enough to sell me in spending the 13. But what I really do want mainly are these pumpkins. That is what I anticipated them to make, and that is what I anticipated to purchase. But then they threw up these decorations, and I can't say no. I have to get those too. That's a must, especially that witch into the wall. And then I have a plushie collection going on. I have to buy the plushie. That's how they get me with that one. I know there's going to be a Christmas plushie now. I'm screwed. But there's a second part to this gimmick. Maybe not intentional, but it kind of grinds my gears a little bit. I told myself I'm going to earn these atoms. I am going to just spend the 900, not the 1300. I'm going to spend the 900 on just the vintage Halloween decor, the Mr. Fuzzy Halloween plushie, and then the two pumpkins, which is mainly what I wanted was the main two pumpkins. That is the whole point to this whole thing right now. So then I get the inside of the vault message and it says, hey, they'll be here on the 27th. But then I come to find out later down the page and once they fill out this page that there's no pumpkins here and they have a sneaky way of just throwing it at the end of each, oh, maybe not that one, each separate individual item, they throw it at the end picture. Uh, maybe not the haystacks. Yeah, no, not in the haystacks. And I don't know if this is subliminal or meant to be. That's actually a completely different one. That one better be in the event. Let's scope that out right there. If you actually go yourself into the camp items and scroll down a little bit, you can find them right here by themselves. So I'm going to work up those atoms, I'm going to pay the 900 flat, and then I'm going to build a really nice Halloween house. I might overindulge in the Halloween. Whoa, another update. Hey, it's McFly from Two Days in the Future. And it looks like with this week's update, Bethesda added even more Halloween items that I have to get my hands on. But it completely changed the whole game because I've grinded out Mischief Night a couple of times already. And I'm pretty satisfied with the pumpkins that dropped from that event itself. 
what persuaded me even more to not buy the pumpkins was they gave us a free smiling jack-o'-lantern. So make sure you guys pick that up so I can knock them off, making my total 600. But now I have to add on this, which I think I'm going to have to add on the bundle. Because the bundle will come with this pretty awesome Wraith Scarecrow. It comes with its own animation and everything. The Trick Candy Bowl, which is awesome. You can leave stuff around your camp. Right there it is. You get the Squished Witch Halloween decoration that we've seen in all the other pictures. And now it's confirmed it's in this bundle, not the other bundle. Even though it's pictured in the other bundle. I don't think it's in the other bundle, right? And then you also get this Vampire Vault Boy cutout, which is alright. I actually personally like the one I got from the Mischief Knight, which is the Grim Reaper Vault Boy cutout. But it's just a cutout, so I guess it's... It's something, right? But this put a whirlwind on my plans. Now I have to earn even more. I have to earn the 13, which is the original, for the Halloween camp bundle, which is kind of funny when you think about it and what it's turned out to be. But hopefully Bethesda stops adding items so we don't have to keep upping the ante. And uh, let's get started. Luckily, we get our daily atom challenges, so they help out a lot. And I've just about kept up with them every day, even if I haven't streamed. I still hop on and I collect them. But then I went through my list again, this time looking for the challenges that are very close to completion. Maybe I can't grind them in an easy way, but so close that I can just do it. And there was computer terminals, and repairing chess pieces, and here we go, on to the grind. Our first stop here is going to be at the Tyler County Dirt Track. This is probably one of my personal favorite workshops, just because... I've taken it over so many times. It's usually where I go when I need to do challenges. It's just a very flat bed, and that's why I'm recommending it for this. This challenge is for decorative items placed in camp, and we're going for 760, and I need to make a lot more. Since I have my plushies, there are only two cloth to place. I've been hoarding cloth for a while now for this specific reason, so I'm going to place my Sheep Squatch plushie. 50 million times until I get this challenge to pop. Be forewarned that it is a workshop and people can easily just buy it to take it and then immediately just waste you. Mainly because they're confused by what you're doing. But several Sheep Squatch plushies later and we get the challenge done. On to the next. Like I've said before, I had to repair chests before and there's also a separate one for modding chest pieces. So again, I'm looking for the least cost to make the number go up the most. And in this one, I'm going to have to go with the leather chest piece. But here, I'm just going to slap between girded leather and boiled leather. And as you can see, it doesn't take too much. You might have to hoard some leather. That's what I had ended up uh, lacking in by the end of it. That's why I did have to run off and get more and then come back. That's 40 right there. Now, this next one's actually really easy. We're going to mod a two-handed weapon. So I made the board which is a two-handed weapon and it's low cost to me. This actually comes really easy because you don't need the full cost to make those. You just got to find the low cost upgrade, which in this case for me would be spiked. And once you pop it over to spiked, you want to go back to no upgrade and that costs nothing and it counts for one on the list. So you're essentially paying half of what you need. And that's 40 right there. Another challenge was to mod pistols and with the pistols it's about the same idea. But in this case, you want to go to the muzzles, and you just want to apply the cheapest muzzle, and then just go back to no muzzle. Muzzle, no muzzle. Muzzle, no muzzle. On to the next. For this one, I had to deploy 50 million camps, and on my main account, I didn't really want to rebuild right now. I am planning on doing it soon, but I didn't want to do it right now and have to worry about stuff later. So I went on to my mule account, Walter White, and I basically just placed down the camp 50 million times until it popped. In an end game sense, it's not that many caps. Up next we got our one-handed weapon, but at some point, I'm not sure when, I unlock mod uh, blunt weapon as well. So we're going to do a blunt one-handed weapon to knock out two at the same time. So I'm at the cane. Same idea with the board. With the cane, you're just going to switch into the upgrades. You're going to go between barbed and no upgrade, and you just do it for half the price, basically. And it's that easy. And naturally up next, after you do the blunt modded weapon, it's going to ask you to do a edged modded weapon, so basically a blade. And I did the machete, I went between serrated and regular, and again, at half the cost, and that was able to pop pretty easy. Now this next one's pretty grindy, it's modding um, arms or legs pieces. It took me a lot of material, specifically leather. But for the cheapest value, I went between treated leather and boiled leather. In my opinion, not worth the 40 atoms. 
The next two are actually super easy and come with some cheese. If you happen to own any kind of skin from the Atomic Shop on either anything you have to mod, you can essentially just use that as the mod and it'll count and it's super cheap. For the power armor I just swapped between a skin and no skin and it gave it to me every time. As for the shotgun I had the skins for that so I just swapped between the skin and no skin. One case where owning skins in the atom shop can really come in handy when it comes to making more atoms. And after all that, that will end me at 1,350 atoms, breaking my goal by 50. And you know what that means. Thanks for watching guys, especially if you made it this far. If any of these tips or tricks helped you out, feel free to hit the like button, it really helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe for more Fallout content. Hope you guys enjoyed this little experiment. Um, let me know in the comments down below. It's probably the first of many. Until next time, I'll see you guys out in the wasteland.